And good morning, Bulldogs. Um, it's March 31st, 2020. Somehow we've made it to the end of March. Remember when we kept saying like how many of the six full weeks till spring break, then the four day week? Does that even matter now? No. No. But hey, it's been a trying month, but uh, a new month. And some of you guys said you're doing fine uh, with your feedback. I'll actually be asking for more Can feedback um, next week because some of the suggestions you put, I've been nice. getting ready to put into place. Yes. What would you like to say? Before this, she said devils. That's her old school. Yes. So I had to start over. Yes. I make mistakes sometimes. So anyway, let's do our news um, for today. I've been up early looking through these news stories and none of them look that great to be honest but i guess that's not a surprise um so we continue to look at these maps every day and you can tell this circle here just keeps getting bigger of the and, and darker red is this area um that's infected or affected i guess both work the most um the deaths in the U.S. have passed 3,000, um, and uh, the article points out that we've actually lost more people to the virus than we did in 9-11, and we spent that whole unit on 9-11, and I was thinking, will you guys be teaching a unit on this someday? Um, all right, um, so it also mentioned um, about other cases across the world. Um, you see some of these areas, again, with 100 cases per day, um, for a week are increasing. And then we mentioned the darker areas in Europe. Um, France has had over 3,000 deaths, like the United States, um, Italy, and Spain together. I think they said had over 20,000. Um, so um, very severely hit areas. No more um, pizza. No more pizza then. Don't be ethnocentric. The kids here know that pizza wasn't pizza until the tomatoes came from the new world. Pizza's from Italy. Yeah, but only sort of. So that means Is that what we care the most about Italians and pizza, or do we care the most about the people? I care about pizza more. Kids, I have a lot of work to do while we're stuck at home to try to uh, teach my child the core va stem value of empathy and how to feel for other human beings. In French, all I care about is French fries. All right. Please ignore everything she's saying because the kids will not believe that that came out of the mouth of my daughter. All right. I need to focus. Okay. So um, the markets um, are still a thing, as I mentioned. And there's um, videos here. I know there's other pictures if you want to check out the videos. Um, testing. Is testing a problem? Is it not a problem? The president, I guess, saying it's not. A lot of governors saying it is. Um, how people who attended a funeral in Georgia, how everyone sort of found out afterwards that they got the virus. Nursing homes continues to be um, the hardest hit um, places in the United States. Um, I was reading the article about like state by state, but they said regardless, New Jersey is the second, unfortunately, for cases of, of deaths and um, positive tests. But uh, it seems that in particular nursing homes, if you want to make your own face mask, that could be a creative, weird thing to do if you want to show me your face masks. That's weird. Mm. Um, I was reading this. I know why I mentioned yesterday, like things to do while you're locked down. And it mentioned um, you could have like, you should be journaling about this um, or sketching. I know a lot of you guys like to draw. I have a lot of artists in this class, um, but it actually, I screenshotted here what it wrote since we are a history class. It said, when future historians look to write the story of life during coronavirus, these first person accounts may prove useful. Diaries and correspondences are a gold standard, said Jane Kamensky, a professor of American history at Harvard University and the faculty director of the Schlesinger Library and the Radcliffe Institute. She sounds important. They're among the best evidence we have of people's inner worlds. History isn't usually told by the bigwigs of the era, even if they are some of the main characters. Instead, it is often reconstructed from snapshots of ordinary lives. 
a handwritten recipe, a letter written by a soldier at the front, a drawing of a kitchen sink. And then it goes on and gives you examples um, of diaries that became famous and, and even won Pulitzer Prizes. Um, so how are you um, archiving your experience? Is it just through social media? Are you making YouTube videos? Are you drawing? Are you writing? You're if you're not- You're making me write in a journal. I am making you write in a journal. And Which so if, is not fun. If you're finding, uh, if you're doing some way, please share. Um, you can put it on the comments or send me a message or something like that. Finding in general is not fun. Does North Korea really have no coronavirus cases? That's probably not the case. Oh, yeah, we still have an election going on. Remember that? Remember us talking about that and shading and maps? Remember those things? Yeah. Hopefully we'll talk about that again soon. Um, the push for people wanting Governor Cuomo to run for president. I think that's the main, main stories um, for today. Um, factories. Um, all these things changing over now. Uh, I believe the USS Comfort arrived in New York yesterday, so that is good news. So let's go back to our slideshow. Um, it is Women's History Month for the last day. If you didn't hear me in my other videos, I will have you later this week doing an assignment based on the woman I mentioned throughout March. So if you turn these off afterwards, please don't because you're going to have to go back and listen to it. Um, so first I'll tell you a little, just a quick story, um, about what happened on this day in 1776. So remember, we just finished our unit on the enlightenment. Um, 1776 was when Adam, Adam, Smith, Adam Smith's book came out and, and all these the other ideas. Came out. No, the declaration of independence, the constitution was years later, oh. right? 1789, because at first we didn't have a constitution. Why? Because the didn't seem like we needed one at first. But then things weren't working. We were like, well, we need something different. All right. So Abigail Adams, right? She, um, John Adams, her husband is not yet president, right? They're in Massachusetts. Yes. Now, John and Abigail, um, some historians call them um, that they were the world's first power couple. Um, the Massachusetts Historical Society has over a thousand of their letters back and forth to each other. Anyway, in one of those letters, she's writing to her husband, John, who's working to help write the Declaration of Independence, right? It wasn't written completely by Thomas Jefferson. He was corresponding with others. And there's a famous phrase in this letter. And she says, remember the ladies, um, saying, you know, um, women should not have to keep dealing with the tyranny of men, just like you don't have to deal with the tyranny of, uh, of a king. Sounds a lot like Mary Wollstonecraft, right? Um, uh, sort of saying, you know, the dangers of if, of not giving women the rights they deserve when you craft this. So, I mean, this is 150 years plus before women gained the right to vote. So it was important messages like this to get the ball rolling, I guess, so to speak. So that's a, a good message from this day. Um, I just have one person um, for today. I wanted to try to keep today's more brief. This is Muriel Hazel Wright. Um, she was a teacher, a historian, and she wrote about the Choctaw Nation. She was herself of various um, Native American ancestry, a Native herself of Indian territory. Um, so her um, father was a Choctaw physician, and her um, grandfather was a Choctaw chief. Um, I mentioned she was a historian besides writing about the Native um, experience. She also authored a lot of books about Oklahoma and was known as the historian of Oklahoma, um, was a member of the Oklahoma Historical Society, um, or how, she was more than just a member. She also edited um, works on California, Oklahoma, well, it was Oklahoma Chronicles, or you can look it up um, if you do some more research on her. Uh, the North American Indian Women's Association named her the Outstanding Indian Woman of the 20th Century in 1971. That's a pretty big deal. Like, you know, the top woman of 100 years, basically. I think that's quite an honor. Well, we're in the 20th century. Now we're in the 21st century. 20th century was the 1900s. Huh. Yeah, it's all confusing. That's one of those things historians have to always check. If it's always one number off. Mm. Um, but... Uh, 
She also did a lot for Native American civil rights um, um, eventually in her life um, to try to um, gain respect and the rights that they deserved. So um, for today, you're going to be doing an actively learn assignment. Um, should take you a bit less time than last, the last assignment. Um, if you do it right and you actually read all the work, it, it, it shouldn't just take you a couple of minutes, right, to, to do it the right way. Kids. Yes, they do it the right way. I trust them. Right, you guys? not trust anyone. Well, you know what I mean. All right, so I didn't log in, but the actively learn... Bear with me a second here. Do, 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 do. Don't trust anyone. See, Especially you're learning from a 12 year old too, guys. Especially the internet. Okay, so this is the assignment that you are doing. Um, you um, are reading about the Venezuelan uh, revolution. Um, we, we finished, we're finishing right now our, our age of revolutions unit with French Revolution, Haitian Revolution. Last year, my students um, learned about the Venezuelan Revolution and um, that's going on now and how it related to what's went on in France and Haiti. We didn't really focus on that because we were focusing on the primaries and oh yes, this coronavirus, which probably in time will tell, will be bigger news. Um, but I want you to know a little bit about what's going on in Venezuela. Now, actually, there was more news that came out this week about what's happening in Venezuela. So after you do this assignment, I'm going to catch you guys up a little bit on what, what's the most recent update there. But I want you to read this first. So when you read through, um, I made this one. So notice there's, um, I put little notes, I put links, there's questions. Um, I counting this as a standalone grade and there's only eight questions. So like if you get one wrong, that's a big chunk of your grade. So, you know, take the time to make sure you're doing it correctly. The short answers, you want to be detailed and specific, right? A sentence fragment, a, a very brief sentence is not going to give you as much credit and actively learn it. It breaks up in four, four ways that a short answer is graded, either incomplete, basic, proficient, or advanced. So you want to shoot at least for that proficient, if not advanced. Okay. Um, let me know if you have questions. Hope everyone is well. Let me know how things are going, please. Um, and I will hopefully talk to you all soon. Today is Rob's birthday. Yes. All right. Be well, uh, bulldogs. She almost said devils. <laughs>